Hi, um, so in today's video, we're going to be um, going more in depth into the concept of time complexity. Um, so in the previous video, if you haven't watched that, I recommend you watch it. Um, we talked about, I guess, the overall sense of it. And we also brushed over the topic of um, big O notation. So in this video, I'll, I guess, talk more about how to uh, quickly figure out the time complexity for your code. So as we know, big O notation tells us the worst case time complexity. And so in Yusuko, you're going to express um, all your big O notation in terms of n. So and um, sometimes there might be n and uh, a few other variables. So like m. Uh, T ETC. Yeah, so usually T is test cases, so there might be a few test cases um, to consider. Um, and then also M might be another um, variable. And so, okay, if we want to like, I guess quickly think um, or like quickly um, estimate the time complexity or the video notation for your code, I guess the first step the first step is to um, I guess first know like what your what your n value is meaning like is it a uh, hundred is it a thousand is it five thousand? Is it 10 to the fifth ETC? So once you know your n value, you want to calculate uh, in terms of n how much, how, like, what your time complexity is. So um, I guess if we go through, like, I'll just move this over to the side. So let's just say we have a standard for loop. Now, uh, Okay, so if we have a for loop like this, then um, I guess what you want to do is you want to like ignore what's inside the for loop. So even if you're doing like uh, count plus plus, see out hello, and then uh, I don't know, a equals b minus c times d. Like even if you have like, um, uh, various operations or um, yeah operations you're performing in the for loop, you just want to ignore that because we're trying to get a sense of you know how many times we're iterating over the um, I guess a constant n in the worst case. So like in a way these um, I guess. How should I word this? I guess in a way, these um, smaller operations, they don't really make a really big impact on your overall time complexity. So um, like if we're actually counting the operations, let's just say like this isn't real, but let's just say each line is one operation, then it'll be three operations per iteration and then n of those, so it's three n. But like I uh, mentioned before in the previous video, even if, we just want to get rid of the constants because we're, we're like solely focusing on the time complexity in terms of n, or in some cases, like the other variables given. Yeah. Um, OK, so this is like the standard for loop example. So the standard for loop is O of n. Now, if we have like a nested for loop, Then like, okay, so previously I mentioned three operations that's not gonna, 
I guess make an impact on our time complexity in the uh, I guess larger scheme. But if we have like for each I guess iteration we have n operations or we're doing another n iterations, ignoring what's in here, then what we have is basically n iterations of n operations, and that's that would be n times n. So nested. So previously it was 3n, now we have n times n. So since we're trying to do it in terms of n, um, you know, uh, we can't really ignore this for loop because it's running n operations. So now we have to consider that we're now at n squared operations. So it's big O of n squared. Yeah, so, um, the number of for loops I guess you have of um, n iterations, then it's just going to be that n to the power of the number of nested for loops. So if you have like 4 and i equals um, that, and you have that like 4 times, then it would be n to the fourth. And then another thing, if you had another for loop in here, I guess k. Then what you have is another variable m. So you want to do, it's now the time complexity is n squared times n. So I guess the overall idea is that you're just trying to ignore the constants and you're trying to simplify the time complexity in terms of variables that you're given in the problem. And then in that way, you'll be like, you know, you can really quickly estimate the time um, complexity and see if it's, uh, your code will run in the time given. And yeah, um, so in bronze, I guess you really only have to worry about for loops. Um, while loops are also the same. Like if we have this code right here, we're still iterating through n times, given that we i starts at oh. like given that i equals zero and we loop until i is less than n, um, then you know we're gonna be doing this is gonna be o of n because we're just running n times. Now, let's say um, it. I guess the thing about while loops is that you have to be very careful that one you don't cause an infinite for loop and two, um, you know, uh, if you're given this condition, uh, you have to make sure that the estimated time complexity is correct because, you know, in for loops, it's really obvious you're running from zero to J, uh, sorry, N, but in while loops, it's not that clear. And the iterative variable might be, in, uh, you know, manipulated inside the loop. So yeah, for while loops, you have to be a little bit more careful. But even when you're doing while loops, it's the same process. You just want to see you know, how many times um, or in what ways am I using the variables given and how can I calculate the time complexity given that. And so yeah, so I guess while loops and for loops, that's all you really need to know for um, um, bronze contest. Um, although in silver and above, you will have to know like graphs and there's a bunch more to come. Yeah. So thank you for watching.